Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can convert full body scan data into fully functional CC3 Plus characters complete with a full library of facial expressions to take advantage of Reillusion's facial animation system. Just a heads up that this is more of a video with the goal of summarizing the workflow steps of wrapping, skeleton matching, as well as baking diffuse and normal maps, so for more details on the individual steps, please refer to the tutorials focused on those aspects. Let's start off with the wrapping, where we'll use GoZ to import a CC character from CC to ZBrush, and then import the full body scanned model and align its position with the CC character. From there, we need to export the scanned model and our CC base body too, both as OBJs, so we can import them into wrap. In wrap, we need to create some nodes to wrap these two models as you see me doing here. It's important to note that the CC base model neutral A contains more than a single mesh. There are also separate meshes for the tear ducts and eyelashes, therefore we need to create a select polygon node to choose the mesh we want to wrap. We also need to add in a subset and select point pairs node and connect them like so. Once that's done, we can click on the select point pairs node and use the E hotkey to enter visual editor mode for wrapping. You can also switch modes via the menu bar in the upper left corner. In order to more precisely locate and define the joints, you can download the regional maps of the model from the Reillusion wiki and plug them in and use them as your reference on your model. You can find this link in the video description. You can also import in the original texture of the scanned model as well. Once you do, make sure to mark the joint positions along with the other important parts like the ends of the fingers and their respective joints. Before wrapping, you'll want to ensure that you create another select polygon node to select the inside of the eyes and the mouth as a mask, since these areas do not need to be wrapped. From there, select the wrapping node and click the compute button to begin the wrapping process. Once completed, you'll see that the two models are now well aligned with each other. If you find that some areas of the mesh aren't smooth, you can create a brush node to help smooth out those parts. This can happen particularly around edge areas of the mesh like the eyes and mouth. After you're finished, be sure to include an apply subset node as well as a save geometry node and connect them like so. Then you can export the newly wrapped mesh as an OBJ and bring it back into ZBrush. You can now either hide or delete the original CC base body 3 mesh and replace it with the one we just exported from wrap. Now that the wrapping is done, we need to move on to matching the skeletons. To start, be sure to have the correct subtool selected, then click on GoZ and send it to CC. Here we want to import it as a prop in the import options. It's normally a bit easier to align the CC character to the imported model pose by switching the ladder to wireframe mode. You can fix the color issue here by adding an opacity map and taking the brightness down to zero. From there you can use the edit pose tool to select the various bones and align the skeleton as closely as you can to the imported wireframe one. That's the main purpose of this step, so focus on the skeleton first. If there is a difference in body proportion between the CC character and the scanned model, you can also use the various morph sliders to conform it more closely. Once you're satisfied with this step, 
go to the scene manager and delete the wireframe reference mesh. Now you can use the GoZ function to update this wrap done mesh back to CC, only this time choose the update option when importing. Due to the wrapping process, the eyeballs, eyelashes, teeth, and tongue will need to be adjusted to the correct positions here. It will then update all of the subtools to CC. Again, be sure to select the current pose before updating. Finally, before moving on to baking the material maps, we need to enter Adjust Bone Mode and click on the Auto Position button to align the skeleton properly. Ok, let's move on to baking the normal maps. What you need to do first is project the details of the original scanned model onto the wrap done mesh. On our original scanned model, we have a whopping 4.8 million poly count, so let's start by subdividing the wrap done to get a similar mesh count to start. From there, switch to subdivision level 1 and apply a mask to the head as we only need to project the details of the body here. We have a more detailed scan of the actor's head and in the next video we'll demonstrate how to replace that specifically. If you haven't scanned the actor's head separately and want to use the results from the full body scan, you can skip the mask step and project all. Be sure to wrap done and the scan mesh subtools are visible, with wrap done being selected. Then click project all to perform the projection. You may find that some areas won't be needed like the shorts here, so we can fix that first. Next we're going to bake the normal map texture. Keep in mind that you will need to go to the UV map and click on Flip V to ensure that the UV results match that of Character Creator. From there, in the Z plugin panel, find the Multi Map Exporter, choose Normal, and click Create All Maps to export all of the normal maps. Once that's done, go to the Materials tab in Character Creator and import in the normal maps to their respective submeshes. Be sure that you choose Normal Import Mode as opposed to Bump here for best results. Ok, we're almost done. Let's apply a walking animation to check the character's animated results now. You can see that it seems fairly decent, however the shoulders seem to be just a bit too slouched. To fix this, let's put the character in a standing pose for easier editing and then use GoZ to transfer the mesh back to ZBrush for some detailed adjustments. Be sure to choose the Create option here. Once I've done my modeling fixes in ZBrush, I can once again use GoZ to transfer the character back, naturally being sure to use Update and Current Pose in the settings once again. Now when we test out the animated walk, the results are looking a lot better. Ok, finally let's bake the diffuse textures to finish everything off. Back in Wrap, let's add in a Transfer Texture node and connect it with the raw scanned model and wrapping nodes. I'll then add in an Extrapolate Image node to automatically fill in the surrounding blank areas and enter in 4K resolution. Finally, a Save Image node where I can then choose a PNG format and save out the diffuse texture. Then Compute Current Frame. For the other body parts, follow the same process but first click on the Transfer Texture node and input a numerical value of 0 to 4 in the U field in order to differentiate between the different UV sets for the body parts. Finally, import the diffuse textures to their respective base color channels in the Materials tab. You can always further edit these using other image editing software for further adjustments if need be. Finally, we're finished! 
So that's the basic workflow between ZBrush and Character Creator for getting your scanned model created as a fully functional CC3 Plus model. In the next video, we'll focus on the head and how we can implement the head scan data onto our CC character. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.